Did you know that we misjudge the concept of survival of the fittest when we narrow our focus to believe that physical strength, greed, and aggression are positive attributes? Keep watching and I'll explain why friendliness and cooperation are the most important human characteristics that has allowed us to become the most dominant species on Earth. My name is Bhavan and this episode of Books in 5, we review Survival of the Friendliest by Brian Hare and Vanessa Woods. We trust Brian and Vanessa because he is currently a professor of evolutionary anthropology at Duke University and she is an accomplished science researcher. They have won awards and been on bestseller lists for the books they have written individually and together. This book uncovers how our species, Homo sapiens, has survived and thrived when other human species have gone extinct over the past 300,000 years. We have been able to coordinate our actions through some form of communication throughout our history, eventually leading to the vast and sophisticated world we have created in 2020. We have badly misunderstood what survival of the fittest means because we have been surrounded by the theory of competition in our socio-economic and cultural lives over the past four decades. The original meaning of the term has been corrupted to now describe an ideal human being that is big, strong, and mean. Striving to gain the qualities we believe to be embodied by those at the top of society is actually an ineffective social strategy for survival because the risks don't outweigh the benefits. While those at the top may seem to have won the social competition, the book details how following this blueprint means that these people first have to expand a greater amount of energy to surpass others, and then they always have to be looking over their shoulders for threats. The authors contend that Homo sapiens were able to outcompete the other human species because we were able to work together with each other. We self-domesticated ourselves and established bonds of identity with a greater number of people as we transformed our communities from a small handful of family members to hundreds of people living in villages, cities, and common areas. The book stitches together evolutionary evidence from a number of different species, such as dogs, foxes, bonobos, and humans, to prove that self-domestication allowed traits that favor friendliness to grow and thrive. The research and experiments described in this book clearly demonstrate that the development of a theory of mind, whereby we can think about what goes on in the mind of someone else, gives us a greater ability to cooperate and communicate in a friendly manner. Friendliness may have helped us to conquer the world, but it also has a dark side. When we believe that, justifiably or not, those who belong to our same group are under threat. Our worst aggression and destruction against our fellow human beings comes from a place of self-defense for our in-group, as we have evolved to become willing to first dehumanize others and then commit violence against them. To decrease chances and opportunities of mass violence happening in our world, and to increase cooperation during a time of global threats coming from climate change, nuclear war, and other risks, hint, hint, COVID-19, the authors implore us to expand the definition of who belongs to our social group. We blind ourselves when we feel threatened, causing us to ascribe dehumanizing characteristics, mostly in a negative sense, onto others. This book is so timely and relevant based on what is happening around the world, especially in America, with protests being caused by political polarization and the feeling that fellow citizens are not on the same team that I am. Violence only increases the perception of threats, causing a feedback loop of dehumanization from all participants against each other. The research presented by the authors strongly suggests that non-violent movements for greater rights are much more likely to be successful than violent protests and riots. We need to reject dehumanizing language when it is used by political elites and media influencers, as that kind of rhetoric only serves to escalate tensions and increase the likelihood of violence. Our capability to become friendly with other people is what caused us to develop greater intelligence and evolve to where we are in 2020. While we currently enjoy the highest life expectancy ever in our history, the institutions and systems that we have built to allow us to flourish are under threat. In order to maintain and rebuild these social structures that we need to survive, the book concludes with the declaration that we must become friendlier towards all members of our collective human family.